Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, let's draw the body of Microraptor. When flying, Microraptor had a strong sense of space. If we want to show it completely in a two-dimensional way, we should choose a side angle and design a movement with its to wings stretching out. This could well present the shape of its feathers, especially those on its feet, so as to show this animal more accurately. Also, note that as a flying animal, Microraptors, feathers wrapped its body into a very streamlined shape, so we should draw the lines particularly smooth. In addition, a big difficulty of this drawing is the proportion of its body parts. It had a very long tail, and the front half of its body was very complex. When drawing its side, we must clearly mark the relative sizes of its various body parts on the paper. For example, on this piece of paper, we first make sure that the front half of the body is within the front half of the paper, and the back half would be the tail, so that we won't make a compositional error that there is no room to draw the tail after half of the drawing. Next, let's draw its body. We start by determining its position in the picture. Microraptor had large wings and legs. We'll draw it with its wings outstretched and pointed upwards. First, we should make sure that its back is about halfway up the picture, a little bit above. Make a mark on the top half of the paper. Its head and tail, the foremost and rearmost, should be drawn within this range. We can divide the whole picture into about three parts. In the front one third and a little behind, is the root of its thigh. Its tail was very long, reaching half its body length, and with the tail feathers, it would account for more than half its body length, so we should leave plenty of room for the tail. The arm probably started here. Its head was small so it looks very small in the picture. We draw its side view to show how it flew with its wings outstretched, or how it flew down from above. We start with its eyes. Draw one eye in this position. And then its skull. Its skull was relatively round, but we can't directly draw such a round skull, because there were some longer feathers on the outside of its skull. Some specimens of Microraptor show crown-like feathers on the top of their head, while others did not, which might have been caused during fossilization or due to species and individual differences. Then, we come downward to draw its mouth. Its mouth was pointed, and its teeth were mainly concentrated in the front of the mouth. We move to the lower jaw. And only draw its front part, followed by the mandibular teeth and the muscles at the back of its mouth. Draw a circle of skin around its eyes, which is commonly seen on modern birds. In front of the mouth was its nose, then we come to the feathers on its face. The feathers covered all the way to the front of the eyes, and the lower jaw feathers went all the way here. Then we draw its neck. Covered in feathers, its entire neck looked like a triangle with a small front and a large back. We draw its wings here. When drawing the wings, we need to know the structure of its arm skeleton. 
First, its shoulder was here, and its upper arm was this long, facing this direction, and then the forearm. An angle was formed between the upper arm and the forearm, not fully stretched. The further back would be its hand. Microraptor had three fingers on each hand, the first finger was relatively short. We can draw the claws facing forward, and we only need to show the claws, because its entire fingers were covered with feathers. The second finger was very long, the third finger was slightly shorter, and the third fingernail was very small. We know this was its upper arm, then the forearm, the palm, and this was its wrist. Unlike the human wrists and the shoulders that could directly turn like this, there was a layer of skin membrane between its wrists and shoulders, and the surface was covered with feathers. The corner here made it look very streamlined. All these made up the upper wings. Then, we draw its feathers. First, the wings had some degenerated flight feathers on this part, and the normal flight feathers were very long. The first flight feather grew from its index finger, and was very long. The second flight feather was the longest, and then they got shorter in turn. This part was the primaries. Further below were the secondaries, which were linked to its forearm. We know that the forearm went from here to here, and the secondaries faced the forearm. We draw the direction of the feathers. The primaries all grew from the palm, so they should face here. When viewed from below, the outer feathers overlapped on top of the inner feathers. When drawing the boundaries of these feathers, we should first note that they were facing its hand, and then pay attention to their overlapping relationship. Microraptor generally had 12 primaries, and we make it as close to this number as possible, not counting the degenerated ones. We've finished the rough outline of this wing, and we'll add more details later. Let's draw the other wing simply and quickly. Viewed from the inside, the outer feathers were on top of the inner feathers. Viewed from the dorsal side, just the opposite. We draw the 12 feathers, with the degenerated flight feathers in front, followed by the secondaries in the rear. Next, we draw its hind legs. We know that behind its neck was its back. Before drawing the hind legs, we know that they were probably here. Upward was its tail, and we can slightly draw the tail in passing. Then, we draw its hind legs. The entire thigh was covered in feathers, so, we draw some feather traces to show the boundary line between the thigh and the torso. Its whole skin was integrated. Then there was its shank, and the front of the shank was such a large S-shaped arc. We draw its chest and belly. Its belly looked bloated because of the covering of feathers. Then, we move to draw the other leg. The hind limb, which also had feathers. 
Its soul of Microraptor was very long. Let's draw it first. Its feathers grew here. Viewed from the outside, the rear feathers overlapped the front feathers. The feathers were very short at the beginning, and then got longer and longer. The feathers in the middle were very long. And then gradually shortened. The feathers on the shanks were much shorter, and the feathers on the thighs gradually became elongated bristles. Then we draw its claws. It had three relatively large claws. Like many dromaeosaurids, it had a relatively large second toe, and a small first toes. Due to infrequent movement on the ground, all three claws were sharp. This was its first toe. We draw the feathers on this side. On this side, the front feathers were on top of the rear ones. Don't draw the seams too long, because there were many covered feathers arranged on top. Next, let's draw its tail. There were some relatively long hairs at the base of its tail, and the entire tail was not much feathered. Mostly covered with short hairs. The whole tail was very thin. There were relatively long tail feathers, that grew at the end of the tail. And the overlapping pattern is still unknown. The rear feathers might be on top of the front feathers, because this arrangement is more in line with the aerodynamics, that is, the feathers at the base of the tail overlap the feathers at the tip of the tail. The tail body probably ended here, but there were still long feathers at the end of the tail. A feature of the tail feathers of Microraptor was that the two midmost feathers were very long, like rabbit ears. Then, we draw the tail feathers on the other side. We add some details to its body. For example, we can draw some fine hairs to increase the sense of volume and layers. Draw some fine hairs under the arms, like many birds today. Several layers of fine hairs covered the entire finger, only the claw was exposed. We draw the coverts on the dorsal side. The covered feathers were relatively short veins, which were plastered to the back of the wings layer by layer like fish scales.
We can also draw the coverts here. Draw some down feathers on the inside of the legs. and refine the shape of its tail to make it more complete. On the feathers, we draw the rakeizes and then some damage marks on these feathers. Good like this, we've finished drawing the body of Microraptor.